Hello everyone. This is the third part of my portal creation workflow. In this part I will do the texturing of the portal, the cave and some of those rocks. Additionally I will create the materials and create some procedural materials for the chains. So first thing I do I will have to import the cave. First I will import the cave low. Set the normal map type to OpenGL because Blender does not use DirectX. Documents resolution, yeah, I'll change it to 248. And alright, that's it. Now I got all that. So what I will do now is I will go down here to the texture settings, bake mesh maps will set it to 248 high definition mesh I will load it it will be in the same folder with the underscore high now I will uncheck world space normal ID thickness because I will not need them in this no need to bake them I will only need normal curvature maybe not even position and just ambient occlusion those three so I will those settings are all right no need for that because we just have one mesh and one mesh we used to bake all right let's bake the cave mesh this will take a while usually for people with better PCs this will take less than people with weak PCs so now it's finished and you can see it already looks like there's a higher resolution mesh on it. That's due to the normal baking. So, first thing we do is we decide what kind of rock we want. This should be somewhat easy as there's a huge library you can download things from those procedurally generated materials, for example. I will try to find something like a rock wall. Maybe even mix some rock cliff with it. Right. Uh, now you see everything looks weird. This is because it's set to UV projection. What we have to do is to pr try planar projection. Now it all looks like a tricky look. But it all looks still weird. This is because in the shader settings I have PBR specular gloss. I use PBR specular gloss because this is not a metal. But you can also use PBR metallic. This one. And it will look basically the same. Just that you have this metal map. I will just use this metal instead though. I think that's actually easier. Just have to change those settings now. No diffuse color, no specular, no glossiness. Instead we have the base color, the roughness, and yep. Not the opacity, the metallic I want to use also. And that's basically it. So that's how the scape looks right now. But that's not how what we want. We want it to look the way we want it to look. So, first of all, increase the scale, something like that. Remove the emission, you don't need it on this. I don't want any snow. So I just click on off, so it's disabled. Will take a while to compute it. Great, now it's gone. So first, also I will set it to 1024 that way it will just compute it a bit faster we need to have full resolution just in the viewport so in the properties we can change more things I think the rotation is fine the moss amount yeah let's maybe moss color change let's try that we'll give it a bit of a more iron orish look increase the moss amount 
Maybe more. Yeah, maybe. Or less. Less. Mm, kind of like that. Yeah, like that. That's that's already better. All right, but just having it like that will just give you weird results because it's just one texture you want to have a lot of things here going on a lot of details so what I will do I have this downloaded texture or material like a brick path we'll have to find it though it's <laughs> yeah well uh, let's go with the rock cliff first let's put it over there we'll have those huge rocky cliffy texture but let's remove the roughness and the color so only the height is displayed that way it breaks up this whole thing even more also not UV projection three planar projection play around with the scale make it something big like uh, like that we can click on this icon to unhide and hide it again just to see how much you're hiding it uh, like how much you're displacing it with the height and the normal textures so why we do this so with this you can see still this shape and it all looks too smooth while with that it all looks like it's really broken down and worn and just more natural to me and then we we'll look something that we can put on the floor here I have this mystery glow put it up there and it looks like that three planar projection scale it up I want the floor to glow where the little water is so we'll create a black mask and particles yeah with the particles and the organic spread I will paint around a bit and just something here comes up uh, kind of like that let's reduce the flow a little, little bit more around here more like that yeah great from this angle it will be a bit visible not too much I don't want it to be too visible too distracting let's hear the base colors here and then in the properties of the mystic glowing stone I can change the emissive color like this glow hue I'll change it to something bluish oh, red looks quite cool too but I think I hit with a deeper blue that way it will make the water look a bit bluer yeah a bit bluer <laughs> great there and those ones I will maybe make greenish like cyan kind of color like those warts or whatever that is it's crust so now I got that done now we'll just look for something that I can put here as a path where the person or the creature or whatever would walk want it to look a bit more decorated there are stone tiles so there they are put it over here and again try planar projection reduce the scale something like uh, something like that should be alright rotate it 90 degrees doesn't have to be perfect and add a black mask now with the brushes I take the dirt brush and increase its size and paint a little path around here just kind of like that I will reduce the size 
reduce the flow and add uh, like a, a bit of a detail like maybe some rocky area were falling on it or it wasn't carved out perfectly just a bit going to a higher resolution so I can see more of the details All right, I will also save this file. I will go to the project file of ours and just save it in the project. Yep, I have an autosave add-on enabled, but it saves only every 10 minutes in a random file that I can't be asked to search. So let's call this cave, like that and save it take just a few seconds i have that so what can we also add here moss lots of it that way we will reduce the amount for particle moss and it will allow us to have still the looks of moss everywhere i want just add the moss here a black mask and some particles maybe organic spread Oops. and put that on a lower flow and just make a quick brush over that yeah yeah like that Maybe too much of flow. Lose it even more. Just a quick stroke. Wait a bit for them to flow around. And then on the other side too. Click anywhere to abort it. And now we have this bit of a mossy ground. So. Uh, let's say. When the camera looks at it like that. All this water is here. Some algae will grow on this water. Oh, first. Almost forgot it. On this moss, set it to triplanar projection. And while we add it, in this little stone tiles, let's disable the water. No water. Will look better that way. All right, so let's just copy it, add a black mask, and make this a bit a different color, maybe darker, greener, less green, with the add levels. So we just take the RGB values, like the green one, and mm, yeah drag the gamma over or maybe not too much just a bit just a bit and then the luminosity also drag over there so it's a bit of a spoiled green all right take the mask again you still should have the organic particles paint at least I still have it. And do a quick brush over that. Let it spread out a bit. Go over here. Let it spread out a bit. Ah. Right. So maybe even more. Let's see. Size jitter, we don't need to increase it. Flow jitter is all right. Size ratio. Mm -hmm. Reduce the particle life a bit. So you can see it in the preview that it's much shorter, even more. And then just paint over this where the ivy 
also grows behind the spot a little bit green a bit green is over here let's also paint some here and just some here too just somewhere moss is quite random and grows wherever it wants so maybe some here great that's the darker moss and this brighter moss I will also add the layers although thinking of it I'll just remove that one go to the moss settings here and just and uh, moss mask and just paint over here too I think that darker one fits it better than the brighter one yeah like that just, just so the edges are a bit mossed because well the rocks are here lying on them giving them coverage from whatever may destroy the moss so and so maybe some more here just a bit click away to our board yeah kind of like that so the water goes around here maybe some more Great. And the spiders around here, so let's add some moss over there and some moss over here, just to break up this boring gray texture. So now I've got that. Let's add more things. The materials. Let's just browse around. Let's see what's looking interesting. No need for plastic or wood chips. Grass. Hmm. Grass countryside. That could be interesting. Crystal. Hmm. Maybe. I mean, can't harm. So now it looks like that. Try planar projection. And make it smaller. I know like that. Yep. We just pick some spot that looks cool. Also in the texture settings of this does it have emission? No. Oh yes it does. Ah, perfect. That means we can illuminate it with some crystals. So add the black mask. Not organic spread, how about... How about... Broken glass? Too weak. Let's... Nah, not... Burn, could burn look cool. Just like... Nah, okay. Let's do it manually. On the brushes, take... The dirt, it's my favorite one, and just dottingly paint around until you find something like that. Maybe find some like here. Maybe paint them a bit, bit tighter and put them underneath the moss because the moss goes over everything. Yep, like that, like, kind of like that. Who knows, maybe there's some crystal coming out of here think about it let's make the flow less paint a bit here paint a bit there yeah so it just breaks up this whole boring texture maybe I'll just make it black and paint over that here might be a bit like that yeah like the moss is still growing over it. Great. Now it looks a bit more roughed up, a bit more broken up. And just put some time in it, some effort, and you will get decent results. All right. So no need to make anything beautiful around here. I'm not making an animation. I'm not planning to. 
although it could be quite cool but that's like maybe a project for another day or one for you if you want to impress someone with like procedural generated portals with just like particles all over the place or something like that but I'm not up for that it would be too long for a tutorial or just a workflow video so I'm quite happy with the results mm, not quite not quite perfect though let's add some dirt trap line protection brush dirt oh, let's save before auto saves quite work good that it reminds me over here it's an add-on you can download it mm, yeah add the black mask increase the size this time and reduce the flow and then just paint over some areas here I don't know maybe some dirt is covering those rocks yeah I like that yeah kind of like that some dirt maybe flew over over this water here maybe it's a bit dirt and dust and grunge reduce the flow even more increase the size even more just put it over everything because dirt is everywhere no matter the fighting you won't get rid of it forever so now it looks decent save it one last time file export or save textures yeah export and then let's find path where we would want to put them for me it's still desktop portal library now we will just create a textures folder and there we'll create the cave okay great so I got that increase the document size to 469 496 I'm sorry um, Actually, before that, I'm sure it's saved. In texture settings, let's see how this would look. Maybe we need an even higher resolution. Loading will take a while we'll with several layers. Yeah, will look, I know it already, it will look crisp enough. Because even though there's, we're quite close to it, there will be the depth of field that it's, it's a great trick to hide your low resolution textures, although it's not saving them. So if you have really low resolution texture, then even the strongest depth of field will, will not make it magically disappear and look beautiful so you really have to have a balance between what detail come out like a little stone over here and what detail do not even exist like maybe a bug that sits over there like a little insect Also, if you have like this low resolution texture, let's I take the example of wood. If you have the fibers of the wood, then you will see them in the depth of field blur. Not well, but they will be noticeable. But if you don't have them because your texture resolution is so low, then you will not see them in the depth of field or like not notice them in the depth of field and that will just make it look bad in general all right yeah with those i'm happy to 
Yep, that looks alright. A bit on the bumpy side over there, but that's alright. Yeah, that's. I think I like that bump, it's like a bit of growing over. So, let's go back to 124. Or 1024. Save it just to be sure. And look at our texture settings. We have roughness, base color, emissive, normal, height. I think I will add displacement too. Simply because I want to have either micro displacement or something that is just black magic to me. Parallax mapping. Like parallax occlusion. I think that's what it's called. It's it just fakes all that stuff, like all of this displacement. Well, when you are too close to it, it will look bad, obviously, but it would look better than having and uh, not having it. And for quite far distances with some animation, it will look just right. So for us, color drawing. Really tight. A bit of extra detail. Alright, and now on the moss I wanted to have less moths. So remove the height. Normal can stay though. Right, basic mapping. Yep. So export textures. Give them the right path. Oops. Bottle. Library textures cave. Actually, I'm gonna save this path. I will need it quite a while. In quite a while. So, PNG, you would, you could use that, but I don't need it here because there's nothing that's so needy of detail and the correct lighting that it's important to use PNG. So I will just go to JPEG, much, much smaller file size and those bit of compression artifacts that you will get it from it, they will not be noticeable at all. So configuration, that's all right. Metal roughness I want. Right now the metallic roughness base color speculating all right. So all fine and export them. Great, so the export finished now and I've checked through the files, they all look fine and I will do now the next part. So I will save it again, just in case. New, this time I will choose metal roughness, select, mm, yeah, let's go with the rocks. First, wait, can I, can I just select all of those? Looks like I can. Yeah. Maybe I can copy them, who knows, would be cool. All right, new. Mm -hmm. And rocks. Open GL again. Okay. All right, can I post those? Will that work? Unfortunately, no. All right, so no issue, just build them up again. Materials, the same we know the process. We'll need the rock wall. We'll need the cliff. We will need dirt, moss. Maybe no crystals on them, wouldn't be quite noticeable anyway. So right, with a rock. Mm. Maybe a lower resolution. Ah, yeah, for the preview. Right, properties, triplanar projection, triplanar projection, also here. 
from that too. And we're set with them for the tri planner projection. Great. So, first, hide everything but the rock cliff, because on this one we will remove the metal, remove the color, and the roughness. In the rock wall, we will remove the snow, change the moss, be more of a metalish color. And water drips is off. Why does it look so? Huh. Looks a bit weird. As if the tri planner projection did not work properly. properly. Maybe overlapping. Yeah. Doesn't actually matter too much. There will be moss particles all over them anyway. Rock cliff. Triplanar. Reduce the scale. Forest dry. Let's add the black mask. And with a particle like the burn, we can just paint underneath that. Ah, not be worth it. Just take the brush, the dirt brush, make it, and keep the size, make it less opaque, uh, less flow, mm, and just paint over it a bit. No need to be super detailed, but it actually increase texture resolution. <coughs> Alright, no, that's too much. 1024 is right. Or even enough. So, we got, th we got that. Uh, hmm. Let's paint it on the others too. A bit here. Oops. Paint some there. Really, no need to be super attention wasting here because uh, just there's some decorational rocks that you will barely see anyway. So increase the size, reduce the flow, brush over them a bit. Or that one too. Now with the moss, another black mask. This time take another particle brush, organic spread again, reduce the lifetime, particle speed, lifetime. That's the shot. Still a bit of shot. That should be alright. Just paint underneath it. Yeah, just like that. But no need to be super detailed again. The ivy growing over it anyway. And just a bit is enough. So over here. You do have this ivy growing over it, but a bit of it. We'll make it look a bit better. Just a bit. Well maybe too good of a circle for nature. There's my mouse right here. Alright. Now I will add another levels. Also reduce the brightness. The green. All the green <laughs> also has to go a bit like that. Yeah, kind of like that a bit. It's a bit darker moss. Alright. Let's see the higher resolutions. Looks fine to me. Nothing too crazily weird going on. That won't be noticed. 
Uh, yep. Wait, this part is done too. Mm. That actually looks like it's been beaten out by something like... That's an accidental great detail. So, but first we also have to add the displacement. And on those properties, enable displacement and I'll disable height for the moss. Enable displacement for the cliff. Enable displacement for the rock wall. Great. So. Now, export the textures again. Hmm, wait, path didn't copy. So, right, go back to the desktop, portal, library, textures, rocks. And I put them in there. Also, JPEG is enough. Uh, document size is alright. Alright. Metal roughness, export them. Right, some errors happened there. Let's save it for future projects maybe. If we or if you want to make any changes to it. And open the next file. New select. Let's take the port low. Yeah, this resolution enough. Open GL. Mm -hmm. Right now we got this thing. Now we just got texture settings, bake mesh maps, disable, 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 disable. Add resolution. Select the portal height. Relation fine, that's all fine. Baked normal maps or non maps. <laughs> all right, this part is done. Now it also looks like the higher resolution mesh. So, this one I want to stick out a bit, but not too much from the whole part because I want uh, from the whole cave because I want the portal light the blue light that we will put in there to be the main focus point or again try planar projection metal no need disable the snow all right the moss will be Brown too. Great. And again the rock cliff. Not the color, not the roughness. Normal metal also is not neat. Increase the scale. Also you try playing a projection. Then increase the scale. Now this bottle will look cracked because of it, which is awesome. Texture setting, let's add it now. The displacement. So the rocks enable the displacement. Go to the cliff enable the displacement. Let's now add the mystery glow. Try that projection. And increase the scale. Well, will I use that? Ah! The emission, forgot the emission. That's why it looks weird. The emissive material. Alright. So. Uh, let's think. How will it look with a higher resolution? The texture. Takes a while to load. Mm. 
Ooh, that looks already better. That looks better. Add the black mask. We'll do some custom color paint on that anyway. So take the brushes again. Dirt. And brush over this part here. You can go full hem first and then remove some later on. Alright. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks actually quite good. There should be a way to see the flare, like the gla lens glare is it called, I think. But I'm not sure how it's... Yeah. I'm not sure how it was enabled. I haven't used it like for ages now. Hmm, let's see. Hmm. Parallax. Oh, no. We'll wreck my PC. Not rough. Nothing there. Well, anyway, doesn't matter. Let's save first as the portal. And now go into the removing part. We'll take a different dirt text. Oh, like cracks. We'll take cracks. And properties paint. Set it to black. And not strong enough. Reduce the size. Ah, not strong enough. Take this dirt. Yeah, with this dirt. Gonna move it a bit better. Yeah, like that. <laughs> Remove it where it's not needed. Good. Now take the cracks make it white and paint with less flow just about around it just here so if it cracked a bit and went through it and blows a bit there not too much you just want to have it as a subtlety not too much crack so all right, maybe, maybe some here. Oh, that orange glow looks actually quite cool. I like it. But this color scheme should be green, because in uh, blue, because I will make another part of it where it will be like very yellowish. That will be. Maybe the dimension this portal is painting, uh, to, um, leading to. And maybe it's a desert or something like that. I haven't planned that out yet. Idea will come soon. So, well, that's, that's not, it's very bright. It could be uh, like, like that. Yeah. And now the, whatever that is. A bit more. A bit more. Oh. Tiny bit. Yeah. Alright. So now those will have a strong glow on it. Mm -hmm. Now let's add the moss. Because it's everywhere. Materials. Let's add the dust too first like to use this as a dust the dirt because uh, it, if it's very subtle it reminds me more of dust than of any dirt oh brushes dirt make it subtle and big and paint it over here Paint it over there, paint it over here. Mm -hmm. Like 
like that. Could be alright. Another material. The moss again. Mm -hmm. I like to think this is like an energy filled rock and the moss can actually grow well on it so that why it will be less dark than the other parts but still not super bright all right black mask particles organics but let's see how far does this one go well that's well enough it's good enough. Let's brush it over here like that. Like that too. And over there like that. Yeah. So now we got that covered. Maybe some moss here. Just to make it look where the ivy is growing to make it look greener over here. Yeah. That maybe even more. Alright, some here. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, like that. I want it to look like it's nature rock or something like that. I'm not bothering about the other side because this is the primary side I will be looking at it. Even if I got it mixed up, I would just rotate it and then we're fine again. So, those look alright to me. Mm -hmm. Let's export them. Export the textures, let's save it first. Export the textures. New folder, portal. All right, this file size should that be enough? I think that should be enough for this distance. Also JPEG and export it. Yes. Right, some issues. That's. non-specular level all right something weird anyway all right great 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 so let's let's take the last part of this new the portal hole also open gel okay and open it Save the changes to this. And there it is. I think I took the normals. So for this one, we will have to use a transparent C map. So no normal is needed, no metallic is needed, no roughness is needed, no height is needed. Base color is also not needed. What we will need is the opacity and the emissive. So this layer, this layer will paint with the emissive. That I will take this crystal brush, no, dirt brush, and will it actually be visible if I start painting now? No, I have to enable the material emissive and go blue with it maybe it don't like that you can change it in blender anyway later and get maybe this blue opacity full opacity on that one let's make another layer and call this one emissive and paint on it on this edge just on this edge first 
this and there's a bit of this portal which glow. Alright. So now I take cracks. Make them bigger. The stencil around it a bit. Got random angle. Just a bit. Can intensify this texture and blend later on anyway. Now make them really big. Reduce the flow massively. Make just a few like here and there. Just a bit like bit is going to the center type of thing. So we've got that. Let's take the cement brush, make it big, really reduce the opacity. Just paint on some parts of it, just like that. Yeah. I'll think no, don't paint on it. Use it to remove, make it black, then paint with it to remove the things from the middle. Wait a minute. What have I done? Yeah. Oh yeah. Wrong opacity. Full opacity. But emission should be black. Oh, I think I will do it another way. I will just make a black mask. I meant the white mask. Take the cement. Make it big. Reduce the flow. And paint using that. Want to reduce and break up this pattern a bit. Then I will take the cracks, make them bigger, also black, and paint over them too here. Yeah. Just want a subtle little rim glow. I like that. Changes can be made later on. So let's call this portal hole. And on this one, we will have to make it transparent. Take the opacity. Uh, take the opacity. Will that do? I don't think that will do. Anyway, let's delete this one then. Hmm. Yeah, alright. So, I got that. Let's try it out. I'm, I'm not sure actually if that's already it. By the way, this time PNG. Because if you would go to JPEG, you will see those artifacts very well. And you don't want that. You want PNG if you want also to have transparency. So, metal roughness. Take the different folder. Library. Textures. Hole. Portal. Hole. Wait. Light resolution could be right. Let's see. Let's see. All right. It looks really like the portal from Portal. Oh, that looks decent. Is that the base color? No need for that. Alright, I think I can use this as a mask for the alpha and transparency part. Alright, so, great. So let's open up Blender again using Blender 2.81. Close Substance Painter. Window. Oh well, I like to work in the full screen. Open recent portal. So that's what they have here. Let's make this one go away. So that 
parts see cycles all fine select the portal first shift h to hide everything but the portal and then you can drag and drop your textures in it we'll take the base color the ambient occlusion we'll put it above there wait no first the base color then the ambient occlusion underneath that we will put the roughness no need for the metallic actually I delete it then the normal and the height yeah so first thing first go to render viewport so now you can see that let's make the sky black for that i will go to the world can't I just here ah yes i can oh even easier don't need to play around with that here just disable it here ah the scene world it is ah right oh that's cool that they allow you to use them here wonderful and we will have a bit of a mixed lighting here great so use the base color here and multiply them with the non color i'm using the node wrangler add-on that's why i can use Control shift to mix them like that put them on multiply non color here and yeah let's go full non color on the roughness plug that into the roughness non color on the normal use vector normal map plug it in here plug it in there and you got that looks kind of weird to me have i messed up something ah no that's uh, that's black because it should be a mission no no that why does it look so black what have i messed up Is Splendor not not using OpenGL after all? What? All right. Let's try it. Switch from OpenGL to the DirectX. Use a combine uh, separate RGB. Plug in the normal. Converter, I can uh, combine RGB and the color invert red to red, green to invert, invert to green, blue to blue. Now, if you compare them, hmm. but if that doesn't fix it, I've messed up something, or is it really? Ah, it, ah it's 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 just a strength. Ah. Well, you got worried there that I've taught you something wrong. Well, now you know how to flip them from DirectX to the OpenGL. So I think that was too strong. That's why we just reduce it maybe to 0.5. Mm -hmm. And yep, that's the roughness, AO, base color, normal height, and the emissive. Right, for the height, I will just. I don't think. Will I use parallax? No, it wouldn't be noticeable here. Take a bump map, put in the height, also non color, and reduce its strength to 
Yeah, maybe 0.5. That's without, that's with. There's a lot. Minor noticeable difference. So. Now. Do they miss it? Just be sure that it's RGB, as RGB, because it's directly color. And plug it into the emissive part. Now you see it's glowing here. Blender 2.81 has now EV since 2.8 and you can go to the EV instead and enable bloom ambient occlusion and then basically you don't need much more so now you can use a color mix RGB set it to multiply factor to 1 and now you can play with this to manipulate the brightness doesn't go brighter than one that's why we will go to the value just add a value node plug it in and now you can crank it up as much as you want now you go to bright glowing crystal like crystal pattern and that's why you don't want to export it as um, as the JPEG you see those red and green spots don't want them on the JPEG. Uh, you don't want them on the portal itself, like this hole, but on the portal hole, uh, portal itself, <laughs> it wouldn't be noticeable. No, just with that, that, you have to zoom quite in. Note something, it won't be that bright, maybe 20. The composite we will change it anyway. And that won't be noticeable at all. All right, so we got that done. So, portal hole. It also got the material already. We will delete that one. Shader, instead we will use the emission. And go to the portal hole. Take this in here and in there. Great, now we notice that it's not the actual size we wanted it to be. That's why we can just be sure that it's median po point and scale it down. Not too much. Just maybe on the X too. Yeah, just a bit. Yeah, kind of like that. Maybe a bit more. Yep. Uh, a bit more like that. Just play around with it. Play around with the strength. And now, if we look at the alpha, it has no alpha. What happens if I do that? Then use a color, a uh, converter, math, multiply. This multiply. Oh, yeah, that, that looks kind of cool too. That way it will have on the outside a stronger glow than on the inside. Let's do that. Maybe 350. That's without it. That's with it. Looks a bit more organized that way and doesn't have this huge glowing spot here that they accidentally put on. Doesn't matter. Lens flare. So, and now I put on a transparent, mix them together, and use the color, wait, what color is this? Uh, that's too strong to me. Shift, Control, D, duplicate this, preview that, and set it to 100. And plug this one into the factor. Boy, oh, that was some effect. No, that no, don't clamp it first. That's important that you clamp it, otherwise there will be issues like those right now. And invert those two. Also, from linear, set it to cubic. We'll make those parts a bit 
smoother. Also, I notice it has some quite low res around here. But I will do that. To fix that, I will make a bit of node trickery. So, I will add a texture coordinate node and a mapping node. Now I also will add a mix RGB node and a texture, noise texture. Put this noise in there and preview it. Now I'm just I will increase the scale a bit. Pluck the color into the mix and the vector mapping also into the mix. Now if I preview that, you can just just a bit play around with that. Let's switch them around like that. And I will plug that into the emissive. If I now preview it, you'll see it looks weird and crazy. Like, that's not what I want. So to fix that, even less on the mix. Don't think you can animate it that way. Nope, just less on the mix. Really low value. Maybe 0 .0, uh, 0 0.05, too much. Oh, let's try it out that. And now increase the detail. And also increase the scale. But if you increase it too much, you basically have a blur node. So just increase the detail, increase the scale to a level that's humanly sane. And reduce that to 1.15, uh, 0 0.015, 25, yeah, kind of like that. And now you notice this part looks better that way. And it does that way, or does it? Bit of faked resolution there. Increase it. Yeah. Playing with the distortion just makes it even blurrier. Yep, that won't change anything. Plugging a noise into a noise will just make it not particularly. Oh, well, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Did this even help? Oh, it did. It did. Oh. I think I can make like a fake resolution node set about of that. Just for you guys to use. Like, look at that. That's... From this to that, that's, that's quite a lot of resolution gained from that actually. Alright, so now I got that. Maybe increase the strength a bit so it's a bit funkier, a bit roughed up. Actually, I think I'm gonna use it on pretty much everything right now here. So, group it up to look better. Just like that. Select everything with the and then control G and call this one how shall I call it? Fake res. Control C on it. Go to the others. Like on this one, control V. And just connect everything. Let's see. How well was this fake resolution to it? And we'll only see if we connect all of them. Let's go to... <laughs> I've used this technique in the past to create like a render of this portal in very high resolution because I didn't have the project files anymore. So I had to improvise and fake the resolution that way. But connecting multiple of the noise nodes back to back, and that works better, I didn't know.
Yeah. I mean, in, the, in my opinion, that looks a lot better than before. Maybe not too much on the swirl of those. Will take longer to compute too, but I think on from that distance, make a little viewport render, save it. Viewport render of it. Yeah, you wouldn't notice that, but you will notice that part. Yeah. All right. So, let's see at the cave low. Let's see that part. So I select it, the material already exists. Same process here, first add the sky. Then in the textures, I will take the cave again, the color, the AO, the emissive, the normal, the roughness, and the height. So, take the base color, take the AO, non color, mix them, multiply, max. Roughness, non color. Height, non color. Normal, non color emissive stays color so now let's plug those into there so we got that part and the bump map we will need like the bump normal map Plug this one in here, this one in there, this one here. Set it to 0.5. Plug in the bump. That takes way longer to compute. But yeah, it, it added resolution on that part here too. Won't be too visible anyway. Will it be visible at all? No. So, base color. Roughness. And at last, the emissive part again, but first we will need to color mix, plug it in there, set, to, set it to 1, set it to multiply, input value in there, what was it, 20, plug this into the emission. Save. So I think that's gonna crash. Well, let's let's reduce viewport to one. Also denoising. Let's remove that. So oh, yeah, some issues are here. Huh. Doesn't really matter. This is a tutorial. Anyway, so we've gotten that part. Now we will select the portal here, the hole, the material settings, set it to alpha blend, and disable the shadow. So now in the cycle settings. We'll go to this object, visibility, mm. go 
Where was it? Somewhere. Was it here? Geometry data, nope. Material, material here. Yeah. And there you can set the material index. Let's set it to one. We will use that later on. Wow, it's quite lay. Is it because of the opacity? I think it's because of the transparency here. Or maybe because this is a very complex scene here. Let's mute that part. Yeah, <laughs> let's let's mute that part before until we are rendering in cycles. So about that, I wanted to use micro displacement here, but this will be a little thing I will try in the end. So let's look at the water. It doesn't look too watery to me. So delete the principal PSDF, add not a glass, but a glossy, or maybe, yeah, add a glossy. Want it to reflect the things that are above it. Enable screen sp space reflections, reduce the roughness. Yep. Screen space reflections are basically just for our viewport right now. The roughness maybe to something like 0 0.04, maybe. It's water after all. Now, converter, texture. Now let's do first that. First we will take the mix shader, then we will take the transparent shader. Plug that part in. And... EV settings, alpha hash, or alpha blend. Yeah, alpha blend is alright. And the factor to point 0.9. Point 0.95, yeah. It'll be quite transparent. But it's quite deep water, so we will need another mix shader and a shader called is it even in there refraction yep refraction because now I can change the IOR to go crazy so we'll do uh, it's just the IOR of water one one three 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 and the color, full white, transparent, full white, glossy, full white. Then, no full, just a bit of refraction. The reason why I'm not doing real water in here, because that would be just a lot of wasted computational power for something that you will barely even see. Most of what you will see here will be covered by rocks, by grass. And you will add some leaves floating on it by this part with the stairs that are over here. So it will be just a waste of lots of resources to compute that. So, GGX, Pacman, yeah, GGX. Oh, Pacman is better for plastics, GGX is better for metals. So, what sharpest is, um, don't know actually, haven't read too much about it. So, Pacman. Uh, yeah. Now we will add a little bit of texture to it, a noise texture, a Voronoi texture. Look at them, that's how they look. Add a mapping node, set it to object on the texture coordinate node. Increase the scale, move them a bit to the side, we'll need several of those. And now let's set it to a base scale of 1. That's the biggest one that will be there. 
bump and the height. That's how it will look basically. Mm -hmm. We'll make some space here. Shift D on that. Now we move it a bit to the side and plug the vector of the mapping node into the vector of the second mapping node and create a sepping, se second bam bump map <laughs> and increase. Actually, we don't even need the mapping node. What am I doing? Right. Object, object. Plug this one into the height. Increase that. Reduce that. Let's see how much would it look on the glossy. Uh, quite strong, way too strong. Just need to be very subtle. Very, very subtle. Even subtler. Let's reduce the strength and uh, the distance. And then very, just a very subtle effect. And then the noise texture over them all. Preview that. Little maybe to five. Distortion should be a bit, maybe 2.2. And the scale maybe 10. Looking at that, doesn't isn't too strong. Looking at this, uh, maybe a bit even weaker. Yeah, just like that. We'll preview that now. Increase the strength of them. Well, maybe can it even here? Yeah, I can. Great. Save it. Let's see how it looks in cycles. First of all, <laughs> you have to go to cycles. Alright, maybe too much. Uh, this angle, yeah, even the less. One five, maybe here, but nine five. Nah, it's limited to this area here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the brightness is just too overkill on this part here. 20 was too much. 5. Let's see. Let's do it that way here too. Let's take the color, no converter, math, multiply. Plug this in here, plug this in here, and increase this here. Not too much, we can add fake lighting in fake lighting in there anyway, and we will. It's called optimization. So cursor to select it, mesh light area, R X 1080. Scale it up. Move it around, move it around. So, move it over the water. So for now, render this in cycles. Let's optimize the seed first. Light paths, we need a total of three. All right, but that's just for previewing thing. But just for the preview, just set the light paths to zero. We'll do full optimization later on. 
and hide this whole thing there. Select the light, use notes, make it brighter, not too bright, maybe three, four, five, pick a bluish color. Then you need to mix shader, transparent, not translucent. Mix them. Now you need input light paths. Those I want to mask out that this lamp is only. Wait, I can do it even simpler. What am I doing? Forgetting things here. Horrible. Ray visible to camera. Volume scatter. Glossy. Transmission. Ah, tra disable for transmission and for camera. Great. So you only see the effect of it here. Whole thing. Uh, that. Unhide the K flow. Looks like that. Floor is glowing. Set it to 10. Enable the disable the world background. Mm, yeah. Looks kinda alright. Yeah, looks kinda alright. There's not much not much stuff going on, that's why it looks weird. Make this background a bit stronger here go back to this preview mode the look dev and let's see what else we have to add so I'll press alt H to unhide everything so I got those rocks here that's right so just add the text to them Mm, rocks, base color, height, normal, roughness, base color, roughness, bump, plug it in there, make some room. Non-color. Plug that in there. Reduce the strength to 0.5. The normal strength too. Ah, looks alright. Barely notice them in there. I like that vegetation part here. Quixel got beautiful stuff. Like me. Was that? Huh. Oh yeah. And those settings, we can go to Ivy. Where's my Ivy? Where's my Ivy? Ivy leaves. Yeah. Ivy settings, opaque, alpha clip, and shadow, alpha none. Oh wait, is alpha blend better? Because also Ben sometimes has weird effects. Hmm. Alpha clip. It's probably faster. Alpha blend removes black part. That's alright. So hide those again. Let's select the chains. Just so we see them a bit better. We will make them brownish yeah this part we will have to make two spider web we have let's make this ivy real quick uh, get a brownish color here add a color ramp drag this brownish color in there in here too make it here darker redder move it closer this one closer 
So it just has a bit of randomness. Texture, mass grave. In there, in there. Now, increase the scale, not too much. And you got random colored spots here. Increase the roughness. Mm, yeah, no need for the normals here. No need for translucency either. The leaves are all right. And that part, oh yeah, this ground part here. Let's just add a dirt texture here, that would be easier. So I'm gonna just go to my texture library, textures. Mm, something from Polygon. Uh, yeah. Let's take some texture I got from the grass essentials. Put that in, in there. Like that. Use the converter color ramp. Make this a bit less, a bit less glossy. This a bit less rough. Plug this into the roughness. Play around with it. Yeah. Detail that you won't really notice here anyway. So let's. Take this part. I'm not actually sure anymore. Should I texture paint them? But that was a hassle back then. Because I didn't really knew what I was doing. So let's not texture paint them. Let's make that procedurally. So let's hmm. thinking about it. Do I have a wood texture even? Probably made for some myself. Textures.com, uh, texture.com has some great textures too. So we'll just take their stuff for this render. We'll link those sources in the description because you really would need to check them out there. They got some awesome stuff. Set this to object. Flat, set it to box, so it's that way. Uh, let's rotate it on the z-axis. 90, oh, got some weird stuff going on there. Rotate it on the x-axis, won't work. And blending, yeah. Uh, well, you notice that? Not really. All right. Cleaner, cubic, in there, like that. Color, RGB curves. Make it a bit darker like that. Red, maybe increase a bit of reddish tone. Uh, uh, maybe a spoiled greenish, but then remove the blue too. Maybe, uh, maybe like that or even more red or just something Th man when i made this my first try in the blender 2.79 i didn't have this ev render engine this just makes it look far better in the viewport than it was before wonderful how far our technology advances so we got infinite space so yeah, let's utilize it Converter, color ramp, plug this in there, preview that, the cracks seem to be, let's invert it, so the cracks are a bit drier than that what's around it, do the roughness with that, won't really notice anyway, so converter, uh, vector, bump, Plug this into the height, this into the normal. Lose that. Here I will add this little fella. Hm. 
make a duplicate of it, go in there, change that from object uh, from UV to object, and plug this in there. Let's see if that even made a difference. Please don't crash. I haven't saved. Oh, it didn't crash. Ah, the difference. The difference is not worth it. It's not just not worth it. From here on, you won't really notice too much of it anyway. Also, when we cover it with moth, moss, <laughs> moth, <laughs> uh, you won't notice too much of that anyway. So, let's do them. Stair locks. Probably have some block texture too from somewhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Bark. No oh, bark. This is this is good looking lock texture. That ah, looks good. Control T. Not UV. It's an object. It's a flat box. Point two in the mix. And reduce the Z. Now we got that. So just maybe to the tenor. Eight. Duplicate this. Set this to one. I can play with this a bit more. Like that. Great. Hmm. I think let's let's add the color ramp. Mix RGB. Uh, RGB curves. Sorry. Make them darker. Remove the red from those. Like that, it's a bit because it's on the water, it's gone bad. So, like that, maybe this one a bit more red, darker, mm, too much green. Maybe looks a lot like stone, but who cares? It's fantasy anyway. So let's play around with that, make it a darker, increase the max darkness, ah, doesn't matter, doesn't, uh, doesn't change it too much. We'll play around with that, yep, all is fine. Alright, so we got that part done too. Have we missed anything, except the particles? Moss. I will add moss in the end because moss is very heavy. It takes a lot of computational power. Well, that I haven't even decided yet, but maybe we will add something like procedural text on that, or probably we'll find something on Pixabay. But this tutorial is getting quite long, and I think I will end it on this part here. And. That was the first part of the texturing and materials. In the second part, we will look closer into them, like the chains, the cobweb in the back, fix some materials, get them to look better, make some changes for the pulse processing in the later on, maybe fix the water a bit. Or it's barely visible, even. So, yeah, we'll. See you in the next parts.